It's a dark side. I would actually call it evil, a uh, component of large-scale chocolate production around the world right now. I'm outside. What's happening? That isn't funny, Wonka. You can't possibly see where you're going, Wonka. You're right. I can't. You'll never have another Hershey bar again. So tonight we are talking about the race to save the world's chocolate. There is a lot of what I call blood chocolate out there. Beans that were harvested with child slave labor. Like a lot of uh, industry that takes advantage of undeveloped or less developed parts of the world, it's incredibly exploitative. So I'm not into that. I've never uh, thought that's a great way to live or run a business or just be a human. I wanted to make something I considered ethical. You know, the Bean to Bar movement is very committed to being ethical. Fair trade is such an important thing, and I think Toby's all about that. I do it not for a marketing position, I do it because I believe it's right. Nuance has been fantastic. Collaborating with Toby is great. What we're all striving to do is to make a positive impact. Collaboration works, and that's what it's all about. Let's all work together. Chocolate refers to the fermented, roasted, and ground beans of the plant known as Theobroma cacao. The history of chocolate begins in Mesoamerica around 1900 BC with the pre olmec tribes as some of the first people to consume chocolate. During this time, Chocolate was only prepared as a drink that was bitter, frothy, mixed with spices, and wine or corn puree. On August 15, 1502, Christopher Columbus encountered the cacao bean on his fourth mission to the Americas when he and his crew seized a large native canoe that contained cacao beans. However, cacao did not gain popularity until after the Spanish conquest of the Aztecs around 1519. Consequently, the new craze for chocolate brought a thriving slave market due to the slow and laborious process of harvesting the bean by hand. It wasn't until the early years of the Industrial Revolution that new processes were introduced to speed the production of chocolate. In 1828, Dutch chemist Konrad van Houten created a press to remove about half the natural fat in cacao butter, which made chocolate both cheaper to produce and more consistent in quality. In 1847, Fry and Sons in England introduced the first eating chocolate by combining cocoa butter, cocoa powder, and sugar. Later in 1879, Rodolph Lint's invention of the conching machine produced chocolate with a velvety texture and superior taste, leading to the modern era of chocolate. You know, I've always been a chocoholic. Toby and I have loved chocolate for a long time. My wife and I uh, were the kind of kids who would take chocolate uh, in our Halloween bags. We would both trade our siblings and friends uh, all our fruit candies and gummy candies for, for decent chocolate. Ten to one to get one little chocolate bar was good with us. Toby and I used to go on dates where we would go to grocery stores and specialty food stores and buy as much fancy chocolate as we could. A few years ago, we were in Costa Rica and uh, I tasted my uh, first less processed chocolate there. Basically, a little chocolate museum we saw the side of the road, checked it out. It turned out to be the highlight of the trip. We went and made really rustic chocolate right from we picked the beans, we put them in a bin to ferment, we did every, every step of the way, and then we got to eat it. But it blew my mind because it was so much more complex than that chocolate I had before. So I came back to the States and uh, we started researching how to make chocolate. I uh, started buying nibs and uh, roasting things and beans. I was selling off my previous business and uh, trying to figure out what to do with my career next. 
was driving home one day in, the, in my car with my wife and my aunt. In about half an hour, I put together a business plan, um, just chatting through it. I got home, my wife was like, You're kidding, right? <laughs> That was the first reaction, and he started going off on this, and we were just kind of saying, oh yeah, and we could do this, and oh yeah, and it would be really neat if we did this, and this, and this, and suddenly we started realizing that it was a real plan and not just a hypothetical. <laughs> so right then and there, Nuance was born. We really started off uh, with the home process. So it was a very small batch. We were making uh, up to about five pounds per batch of chocolate. We tried to keep the kind of chocolate we were making in the small batch process at home exactly the same as we, uh, we make now. Uh, when you get larger, the, the pressure is on to be more efficient, make more for less money. Uh, we're going to resist that. We're going to figure out how to do that and keep the flavor without uh, getting too distracted. They arrive like this, and uh, it's a raw fermented bean, dried out. The first thing we do is we throw them into big barrels to make sure that we don't have moth problems, and we throw some CO2 blocks on there. Then we do is we, uh, we hand sort them. Uh, you find all kinds of things that you don't want to put in chocolate in a bunch of beans that come from less developed parts of the world. After that, we uh, roast them, we cool them down, and then we, uh, we crack and winnow them. And that makes a nib. The nib is the inside of the bean. Uh, we crack it, a little machine that spins, kind of spinning blades, shatters them more than cracking really. And then we winnow off that husk through a vacuum pressure uh, system. And the nibs really are, I mean, at that point we have full chocolate flavor and aroma. Uh, you don't actually have any chocolate flavor aroma until you roast. Then we do our first stage grind, and we grind it into a chocolate liquor. So it makes a particle size a little smaller. Uh, still pretty big chunks in there. It goes right into the melanges and liquid stage, kind of like peanut butter. We're going to make a single origin chocolate. Single origin means just one type of bean from one region. Uh, we just add the, the liquor um, and sugar. And we put it into a machine called a uh, melanger, which is a big stainless steel drum thing about that big around. And that rotates uh, the uh, sugar in the cacao for probably say 60 to 90 hours. And we're grinding the particles down. And it's so small you can't feel the texture on your tongue anymore. It gets really, uh, that's the smooth, velvety nature of chocolate. So next step is uh, tempering. We take that, we melt it. Um, it's kind of a controlled melting and cooling process. And that's right as we mold it into the mold of the chocolate. And that is the last step, is, uh, is molding into bars. So wrap it up, bring it over to the cart. <laughs> I don't think anybody knew about the unethical nature of chocolate. Uh, I had no idea. I would actually call it evil, a uh, component of large-scale chocolate production around the world right now. There is a lot of what I call blood chocolate out there. And that is chocolate uh, that starts with beans that were harvested with child slave labor. You know, I have a son, and I think about that a lot. I don't want people, uh, other people's sons out there having their hands cut off uh, working in some uh, plantation in Ivory Coast. So we made sure that uh, everything we did is ethically and sustainably sourced. Toby and Alex have a commitment to not buying any kind of cacao that's going to come from something that's unsustainable or unethical. So all of the cacao that we actually get is fair trade or better. Direct trade I think is something that is possibly even more important than fair trade because direct trade means we're working directly with farmers. Um, we can see how they're producing the chocolate, making sure that they are treating their employees fairly. You know, his goal is at some point to know every one of his growers personally. But honestly, the best thing they can do right now is to support the Bean to Bar movement. The Bean to Bar movement, uh, in my experience, is very committed to being ethical about this. So the small Bean to Bar guys out there, um, we believe it, we're buying it, we're also paying better prices. We're small, but we're making a difference. And that's one way that, uh, you know, a consumer, it's just one person, it's very small. But if we all do that, we'll make a difference.
with local people has been one of the greatest surprises and in the most joyous way with Nuance. What we found quickly is Fort Collins has got a neat foodie culture that's emerging right now. And with the craft industry, people are making things from scratch. So one of our biggest partnerships we work with right now is Feisty Spirits. We get Toby's husks and we um, have our oat whiskey that um, we've distilled and we throw those husks into that whiskey and just let them sit and infuse for a matter of a week or so. Pull out all those flavors from those husks, filter that off, then we sweeten it up and then we'll actually add the Thea Brew to enrich that chocolate flavor, to give us that really nice strong chocolate flavor. Ramas uses some of our brandies, and he uses our whiskies, our Better Days bourbon, he uses our rye to make truffles. The breweries, they're the ones who really came in this town and started building that, uh, that sense of collaboration. And you think they'll be competitors and not talking to each other. Instead, they get together and every year they brew uh, collaboration beers. So we fit right into that culture. Um, seeing what's done for them is, I think, self-evident as to what collaborations can do. It's the reason to have a business. If you pick a community and you want to expand and share and invest, reinvest in the community. I think it just uh, it allows us to have um, innovative new products. You know, let's, let's people try different things. And then it, it also exposes them to, so maybe they've had whiskey before, but they haven't heard of a local chocolate maker. So it exposes them to other you know, avenues, other businesses. It's pouring chocolate into the brew tanks. It's, it's getting brewers and chefs and restaurateurs together to collaborate on amazing things. And Toby is right in the middle of it. So we love local for the sake of local. But honestly, local for the sake of better, it's even better. Bean to bar movement is really talking about a specific process that's different from that kind of commercial industrial manufacturing. When you can go in and learn the difference, and if you know you're making a difference by buying this product and supporting this product, as he grows, you know, Fort Collins grows. Unfortunately, the chocolate world at large is very unethical in many ways. People really don't know what chocolate is. The passion he has for chocolate, it's, it's been really fun working with them. We collaborate, we talk with each other, we develop new ideas together. Organized, deliberate, and focused. All those things, I think, because we are such a community, we just look forward to working with each other, and that communication has really created a community here. I feel like we all have an opportunity to give an experience to people in this town. Right. You take a chocoholic and you give them really good chocolate, and uh, you've been an addict for life, and I'm their dealer.